Hello, I'm Trevor Lewis, and welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you in Inkscape how to use blur and opacity to add some more subtle things to your vector art. Um, this is not so much for use with the laser cutter, but it does allow you to do things like this. I got this from a tutorial from the Inkscape website, um, and I followed the steps, and this is what I ended up with. Uh, you may have already figured out how to do some of this with layers or with gradients. This is a gradient back here. You can see it's going from yellow to, to clear. And then there's a gradient in the background here that goes from dark to dark to light in a linear gradient that creates some of these illusions. And you can see that they're layered on top of each other to create these illusions of highlights. But some of these things are... Uh, are look the way they look because of our blur and opacity. So um, some of the things are just they're just straight up the color. There's no gradient at all. This is a flat white film, but it's blurred at four percent and its opacity is set to fifty percent. If I turn the opacity back up to a hundred percent, you could see that it's a little less subtle. And if I turn the blur down to zero, oops. Uh, that happens to me a lot. Be careful with that. If you turn your blur all the way up, you can't see it at all. But if I turn the blur down to zero, you can see it doesn't look very good. So, But it's amazing what a little bit of blur, 4% in this case, and a reduction of, in the opacity does to make things just a subtle highlight around the edge of the candle and create that illusion of, of light. Okay? So... This is a very useful thing to make it so that you can have things that are that have that illusion of highlight or shadow. Um, but let's show you another example. So uh, we did this example of layers here by using the same drawing over and over again, but with different colors. And we created the illusion of depth by making the value decrease and making these darker underneath. But we can take this to another level here by adding shadows. And you can see that the difference here between flat and shadows, you get a lot a different effect here. And what, what we did was we just have another copy and it's actually fully black, which you can see down here in the film. But because the opacity is set to 50%, it looks kind of clearish. If I turn the opacity back up to 100%, you can see it's a lot darker. And my blur is only set to 1% here. The blur is very sensitive. But I set my blur to 0. You can see what I did was I have another copy of this top layer. And it's just offset downwards like a drop shadow. And then all I have to do is blur it just a little bit. And I get a pretty good effect. Um, and I decided to turn the opacity down because once I added a few shadows... Um, the shadows start to add with each other because they're layered on top of each other. So I actually have a couple of shadows. I didn't shadow all the way down because it was getting too dark, but it adds a nice layer and an effect. So in order to do this, what you're going to do, let's draw a shape. I'm going to start with a circle. It's very blue. I'm going to draw on top of it with the Bezier tool. And, and I'm just drawing with straight clicks right now. And let's make this one filled in with some other color. And we'll set the stroke to none. So you can see very stark right on top. So to get this window open, what you do is you go to Object. And you can choose Fill and Stroke. It's also Shift, Control, F on the keyboard. And then this window should pop up. If it pops up over the top, you can dock it over here. My opacity is right here. It's set to 100%. So I can just... I can click on it, and it, sometimes it'll click and drag, and I can see what it'll look like. If Depending on how fast your computer is, this could be a drag on your system, though. You can also see that you get an opacity me meter right down here in the fill, too. I like, prefer to use this one, and if I, I can select the this text here, and I can actually just type in whatever opacity I want um, to get the effect that I'm going for. Okay, The blur is the same way. It's right here. Again, like I said, though, you're going to probably want to go 1% at a time with the blur. The blur gets very blurry very fast. Once you start getting up to 50% blur, it's basically almost not there. It's just a little patch of haze. So this is often useful for highlights and shadows. So this is not a very good shape for a highlight. I'm not sure what that would imply on this shape. But you can see it does look very highlight-like. 
and by placing a highlight you can create a light source. So if you imagine the light's coming in from this direction, it's hitting a 3D shape, what would the shape of the highlight be? Right? So that's one option, right? You can get a lot better with the Bezier tool based on what we've used before by clicking and dragging, right? And it really depends on what style you want. If you're going for like an anime style, you would want nice crisp edges, but you could turn down the opacity, right? If you wanted, and you can see, you can start to see the blue come through a little bit. But in a more realistic style, you might need a little bit of blur. And you can sort of just dial it into however much you want. You get very nice subtle effects. Okay. So there is a highlight. Let's turn this guy into a shadow here. Here's all you have to do for that is just switch the color. Now it's a shadow. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do at least I would like you to add some shadows to your layers project. Um, if you want a challenge, follow one of the tutorials and use blur and opacity. You can do this one, you can do the rocket ship, you can do the um, the teacup, use some blur and opacity, add some shadows and highlights, make your vector art more realistic.